Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we have some pretty disappointing PlayStation 5 news in regards to the upcoming game that will be coming out in the next few days, aka Call of for Spoken, we have a lot of the reviews, a lot of information coming out over here. So I'm going to go and highlight and showcase up some of that to you guys. But as well, we also have some pretty dope news when it comes to Spider-Man, one of the next upcoming hopefully good games that we're all patiently waiting for, which is apparently so massive and so big that everyone's getting astonished. So we got a little bit of bad news and also regards a bit of good news right after. So make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on. Give me your thoughts and comments down below. We have the Target links, we have the Amazon links, Twitter links, and everything else too. And let's... Dive into, well, kind of some mediocre news. So as you guys may or may not have seen, Forspoken's had a lot of kind of big criticisms before it's actually come out. Now, I myself have not had a chance to go and touch it still, but a lot of folks have finally had a chance to kind of discuss their thoughts. And so far, it hasn't been so, so good. So in case you guys haven't had a chance to see a lot of Forspoken, the game itself is an intriguing one. It's kind of an open world game. You guys can see a little bit of gameplay up in the background over here, where it's intriguing. It's really based on magic, open world, and a lot of folks are not very happy. Some of the reviews are in the four. Some of the reviews are in the sixes. Some of the reviews are basically stating that they saw and they kind of got the vibe of what they were going for, but it just didn't hit. Although we have on the opposite side, we have seen some folks that are giving us some nice sevens, eights, but this is not one of those games where it seems like a lot of them are pushing on this like 10 out of 10 best game ever. And I think a lot of folks are getting a little bit more skeptical. You can even see some things maybe might be better left unsaid. So right now it does seem like a lot of folks are very, very not happy with it. So they've had a chance to go and see and stop me if you've heard this one before. A down on their luck orphan has their life turned her upside down, and they get whisked away to a fanciful new world where they suddenly have magical powers, becoming and befriend and becoming a hero. They need to stop all the basically evil in the world, and this sounds like an anime in all honesty in the current trend. It's because they're basically saying that Forspoken is remarkably a generic RPG from its bland story to its lifeless open world, and at least they did go and say like their energetic combat that you guys saw little bits and pieces of, flashy parkour and everything else, make it kind of intriguing. Plus, with also the slim campaign to make it like not like you're slogging along for 80 hours in an open world game, but apparently well, they keep on saying the game holds a lot of repetitive tasks. There's not a lot of appeal. There's not a lot of love. There, unless you want to do trophy hunting, which some people are iffy on, even myself included. And it just seems like this game is kind of falling flat for this upcoming PlayStation 5 exclusive. The newest action RPG from Square Enix puts you in the brooding shoes of Frey Holland, a well-acted but largely unlikable New Yorker who gets pulled away through a portal to the fantasy realm of Athea after actually becoming bonded with an equally unlikable talking arm bad she calls Cuff. And the four realms of Athia have been affected with corruption, which has forced its populace into the last remaining city of Sepal. So basically, like, people are seeing the game, and uh, so far, they're not happy. Yeah. So apparently, like, one of the biggest things is they love the animations, they like the style, they think the game itself is kind of cool and dope, and it does have potential. But sadly, I think a lot of folks keep on claiming that the game just goes and falls flat. A lot of these reviews I've been looking through to kind of give you guys like your early impressions to make sure you guys can maybe try to cancel your pre-orders or maybe kind of wait and see a little bit more gameplay before anything else comes out. Uh, a lot of folks are saying, yeah, like, it's not bad. It's like they're saying it's average. It's not like a groundbreaking game. It's not a game of the year. And it's a little bit on the disappointing news so far. So basically, the world and story are about as bland as they come. Eagle part's predictable and forgettable. There's not so offensive, though, but the real crime is how poorly the writing establishes any of its characters and their relationships, and it's kind of been a big critique a lot of folks had. They were saying, like, these conversations and the audio and the dialogue were just so mediocre at the end of the day, which I feel so bad. They're saying it almost seems like a buddy-buddy cop movie as well. It just seems strange. And apparently also saying like the bonding happens more off screen and the story, which is mostly told through exposition dumps between large stretches of open world. It's kind of like if you had to rely on only the God of War story from you talking to with the characters and it's like they're transversing, not from like cutscenes or a proper like storyboard or whatever. And they even say it can be fun though. So based on the combat and the parkour, they are saying it is kind of fun. And we even saw, like I said, some of the gameplay over here. Well, this does look kind of dope. It looks very smooth. Animations can maybe be still slightly better, but like there's things going on. You can kind of see some of it where like it's it's different. You know, they're trying to focus more on magic and open world, which I can appreciate. Like I like this. I like the idea of having a game like this because it is, you know, it is different. But it does kind of seem like oh, if you have a kind of a mediocre story, you can just kind of bounce around kind of doing nothing. Almost kind of gives like a Ghostwire Tokyo vibe where Ghostwire Tokyo had kind of cool combat, but it did get repetitive after a while after doing it like a hundred different times. And then the story itself was 
okay, like you were kind of intrigued, but like if you want to continue, you almost want to sometimes play a game just to see what happens in the story next. And that's kind of what a lot of these big reviewers keep it going into. And also they keep on saying like a lot of this game is not even worth exploring. It's an open world game where a lot of this stuff is just meh. Like you have the cool like traversing, you can like you know, float around, you have all the animations and stuff, which is cool. But they keep on saying that the actual world itself is just mediocre, where it's just not that much going on. And like, it's just not worth it. Like if the story is kind of short, then like what's the point of playing the side game stuff versus like God of War where I felt like even the side stories, they had their own little mini missions that felt like they flowed into the game even after you beat the game. Like it felt like a very good, generally good game. And also because the open world is apparently big, which is great to see, but a lot of folks are just assuming like these tasks are just mediocre. It's just not really worth doing. It's not that fun. And it does kind of seem like this game is not necessarily going to be a flop. Because don't forget, games like High on Life still had mediocre reviews, but they were still enjoyable. Like they were still worth playing. People still had a fun time doing it. But at the end of the day, it just wasn't, it hasn't seemed like it's so, so big. So a lot of these kind of things are saying, yeah, like, you've seen the game before, you've played the game before, it's just kind of a flesh out of the water type of style of game. And, like, it's cool. Like, you can see, like, some of the animations here, some of the style here. But, like, it doesn't seem like anything that's groundbreaking, anything that's changing the complete flow of the world. Like, it's not changing video gaming as a whole. Like, I mean, I'd still check it out. I would still play it. It seems okay. We've also had other different things, too, as well, like we see from GameSpot, too, that are like, hey, here's the game. Like, taking the inspiration from Isekai anime stories. And once again, even this is kind of like, it's fun. It gets cooler as the game goes on, which has kind of been like an overall big kind of theme where the game itself does get better as it progresses, which is nice. But a lot of folks are just kind of given like a, we're basically in like a 5 to 7.5 as a general rating. So keep that in mind, both on PS5 and PC. This is a PS5 exclusive. But at least I have some better news over here. We're seeing a lot of big news when it comes to Spider-Man 2. So I feel like we need this. Because we have all this disappointing news, we need something nice. Where Spider-Man 2, basically Peter Parker's actor, Yuri Lothenthal, has even been saying this game is insane. Like, the scale is massive. It's huge. And there's him confirming that he's been still working on Insomniac's upcoming sequel, describing the game as astonishing. You hear more, basically, from them as they're kind of doing their interviews. But basically, Insomniac Games' Spider-Man Blue is all away when it was released in 2018 with a subsequent PlayStation 5 remaster and spinoff 2 as well with Miles Morales was also very popular. But everyone out here in terms of the Spider-Man game is saying this game has like been huge. It's massive. And they still are assuming they want to make sure this 2023 release date is going to be good. They even state, I've still got a lot, a little bit to do. It's a massive game, so I'm still doing a little bit of work, Lowenthal confirmed. I know they're confident about their release date, and Insomniac has always been good about that. Obviously, I can't really talk about the game much, but I will tell you that it's astonishing. I'm so excited for you to play it. They know they've got big shoes to fill from the last two games, and they've done it. He continued, I just can't wait for people to go play it. Which is getting me more hyped up, because Forspoken was skeptical at the start. The reviews were skeptical at the start. The characters were cool, but it's all unique IPs, and it's just nothing... Like it's, I like new, I, unique IPs. I like the attempt to try to make something new and introduce different types of games. I think that's why some folks were kind of skeptical on this, because it wasn't necessarily a new game. It's a stereotypical story with, like, cool animations, which I would still give it a shot. Like, I'm not against it. But when we see stuff like this for Spider-Man, where they're saying, like, the sequel is going to be bigger and better, going to be a PS5 exclusive, so we know it's going to load faster with a good SSD, the graphics are going to be nicer, the ray tracing is going to be bumping, and all the people who are in, on the game are so, so excited that they just want to leak it. Now, this is the game I'm getting behind on. This is based on that they also have had consistencies with Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales. So it looks like the sequel is going to be huge. It's going to be Peter Parker and Miles Morales will most likely both be playable characters. And as well, like they are still expecting this to be coming out in the fall with all their other various news. But we're seeing this type of stuff. Like we're seeing all the news over here. And I'm just so, so excited to go play this game because I want to play it so bad. Like it's going to be so good. So while we might be a little bit disappointed on Forspoken, at least we have Spider-Man to go and carry us. And last but not least, we have still been seeing even more news in the last of box sales jumping up to over 238% after the show launched, even in the UK. So in American markets, it's going up, it's doing great, but also then too in the UK markets as well, they're also apparently blowing up and doing fantastic. So it does kind of seem like the Sony effects doing very well. So you guys can kind of see the Fire Emblems, number one, but everything else too is also been popping back on up over here in case you just want to have a quick glance of all the games and how they're doing. That's about it for this video. Give me your thoughts and comments down below. Hello and well, make sure you guys are subscribed with 
the notifications on. We have the Twitter and Twitch room down below, Target and Amazon links down below, and everything else all in between. And leave a like and give me your thoughts and comments down below if you guys are excited for, well, Forspoken or disappointed, and same with Spider-Man.